Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. Well, if you watch the news, you know what's hitting a new cycle right now. Zombie cicadas. What is the deal with zombie cicadas? What's going on here in 2020? Well, today I'm going to tell you what the backstory is about the zombie cicadas. Why, in fact, they are like the zombies that are popular in scary cinematic culture today. And I'll explain the whole story. But first... If you like what I do and you want to help me share this message and get more kids and families engaged in exploring and learning outdoors, please subscribe to my channel, like, leave me comments, and share. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like dog Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... So zombie cicadas, what is going on? What is this story? First of all, this is real science. This story about zombie cicadas came from a research study at the University of West Virginia and is from a journal published article in a journal of geopathogens. pathogens. Um, and the title is, How Select Fungal Parasites Enlist Living Insects to Do Their Bidding. And the name of the fungus is Massospora. But before I talk about the cicadas, I want to talk about how this phenomena of an organism overtaking the body of another organism, manipulating its behavior to help it reproduce, is not all that unusual in the animal fungus parasite world. People are familiar with rabies, and if you have dogs or cats, you know you need to vaccinate them. What is rabies? Rabies is a virus that infects dogs, raccoons, skunks, a lot of different animals. It causes them to act crazy. In old movies, you used to see a dog that was infected with rabies, and the kids or people would run away yelling, mad dog, mad dog, mad dog. And mad was the word that used to connotate being crazy or out of your mind. And in fact, the animal is out of his mind. Dog infected with rabies will drool at the mouth, act strangely. Skunks or raccoons or foxes with rabies will suddenly start to be active during the day when they're normally active nocturnally and they'll wander around. And a couple other symptoms are they drool at the mouth and they drool because they won't swallow. And, the, and by not swallowing, it increases the viruses in that saliva. The animals will often act very aggressively. So it's the virus manipulating this organism. The virus controls the organism's brain, causes it not to swallow, causes it to act crazy, causes it to be, act aggressively because it needs to spread its virus in order to, for that species to survive. And for it to survive, that virus has to get into the blood of another organism. By manipulating the animal that it infects, but not killing it, because if it kills it, then that just ends the virus. This animal goes out, bites something else, you got the virus in the drool, you got the animal being very active and moving around, interacting with other animals. So the funny backstory on that is how, would you, how can you stop rabies? Well, you could have dogs and cats wear masks. You could increase social distancing because they can't transmit that virus if they don't bite something else. And of course we have vaccines. So there's some parallels there. So here, dogs, rabies. This is a virus that is carried and manipulates the organism in order to help it re reproduce. So let's talk about cicadas. If you're not familiar with the story of the cicadas, check out the two videos I did where I tell the whole story and the life cycle of the cicadas. But today I want to talk about what makes zombie cicadas. So cicadas live under the ground for 17 years, and they're likely to be carrying or pick up the massospora fungus in their bodies. But the massospora fungus remains inactive for 17 years. It's not until the cicadas emerge as adults that they start reproducing. They reproduce in the abdomen of adult cicadas and form white masses, chalky white masses of eggs inside the abdomen. And at first you don't notice it. You, if you looked at an infected cicada, its abdomen would be full of these things, but you wouldn't notice anything different. However, you might notice some behavioral things. Basically, cicadas and mating 
reproduced by the males singing and the females doing a behavior called wing flicking. And the males sing and the uh, female shows up and the female does a wing, wing flicking and the male contacts with the female. And that's when the, the virus spreads. Well, this virus in females will exaggerate that behavior on the females to make them more attractive uh, to males and more likely to contact them so they can spread that fungus. The males will often start doing female clicking. Males that are infected with the, vir the, the, the fungus spores will start doing female behaviors and do female wing flicking to attract males. And then again, it enhances the contact between organisms and passing along the spores of the virus. The last thing, and this part is kind of gross, and this is why they call them zombie cicadas. Sometimes the abdomen of the cicada will break off and there's just this chalky white mass of eggs where the functional body parts of the cicada was and he just drags himself around. The cicada that's infected with funguses will still function. They'll still fly, they'll still crawl, they'll still do mating behaviors. And even though half their body's not there, they'll continue to do their normal functions. So it's pretty crazy. So that's why they call these zombie cicadas. And I think the news media just grabbed onto this and saw, well, this would be fun to attract people's attention. They're zombie cicadas because the fungus has taken over their, their brain and their body. The, they're manipulating the behavior. You get males that are starting to act like females so they can contact more males. So the virus, the, the fungus does everything it can to increase the chances of its fungal spores being passed on to another organism where it can continue to reproduce. And the uh, behavior changes and then the zombie part really is accentuated when you see a cicada crawling up a tree and it's missing half its abdomen. So this has been Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard, giving you the backstory on zombie cicadas. Stay tuned. My next video will be on bioluminescent fungi that I found walking in the forest the other day. They're called jack-o'-lantern fungus and they really bioluminesce. And they also produce a drug that's being used right now to treat cancer. So subscribe to my channel, check me out, share me. I want to get more and more kids and families involved in, in learning outdoors and talking about what they find outdoors, engaging in science, looking stuff up, fact check me, look up the article, read the original article that I'm talking about and see what the, the, the story is. Thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard.